Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Cap at Home. My name is Miss Allie and today we are going to be making these really awesome data self-portraits. So what does that actually mean? So we're going to actually be using data about ourselves to make these really cool um, symbolic self-portraits. So we'll talk about that and what we're going to need today. So I'm going to set up my work board and we can get started. All right, so let me just finish getting set up here. Just my camera a little bit. Okay, so like I said, we are going to be making these really awesome data self-portraits. And so like I said, what does that actually mean? So we're gonna be using data about ourselves to make some self-portraits. So what we're gonna need today is some paper, so I recommend white or black paper, and an optional um, choice would be to also grab an extra piece of colored paper to make a border um, or an outline. Uh, so this kind of gives it just a little extra interesting um, to our finished touch of our piece. So we're going to have that. And we also need some markers. I got a bunch of markers over here. Um, some, or you can use crayons, colored pencils, um, oil pastels, chalk pastels, anything that you have available to you and you feel like using. All right, let's get started. So like I said, we're going to be using data about ourselves. So I have this handy dandy this or that sheet. And so this is basically how we're going to be making our self-portraits. So we're going to be looking at these items to be able to pick one of these, this or that, and this will create our data, and that's what we're going to be making our self-portraits with. But really quick, since this is sort of an abstract art piece, what is abstract art? So abstract art is non-lifelike portrayal of objects, scenes, so it's usually something that's non-specific, hard to recognize, so it, has, it focuses on a lot of form, shapes, and color. So that's sort of relevant to what this is. We're using lots of form, shapes, colors, filling the space. And what is a self-portrait? A self-portrait is a work of art that someone makes themselves. So that's what we're gonna be making today, a portrait of ourselves. And they can be realistic or something that really looks like you, or it can be idealistic or symbolic. So something that doesn't look like you, but represents you in a way. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. And the other topic we're going to cover today is composition. So thinking about putting things together, placing and arranging, arranging our visual elements. So thinking about where our shapes are going to go and the color choices, how we're placing them, which direction they're going to go, filling the space. So those are our three main topics. So we're going to combine all of these things to make our data self-portrait. So again, I'm going to post this, this or that, in the comments of this video for you to make your own. But for now, we're going to go through it together. And I'm going to kind of show you a couple different things that we can do here. So the main part of this that we really want to focus on, there's only a couple rules. One of them being that you have to answer every question on here. The other one being each question has to be a different color. And the third rule being that you have to fill the entire page. So really wanting to get these really cool compositions. So I can take my markers. I have tons of them over here. Again, you can use anything from colored pencils, crayons, um, oil pastels, and you can, I have white paper and I mounted it on a blue piece of paper, but you can use um, black paper and using like crayons or oil pastels on black paper usually works, looks really cool. Um, totally up to you. So our first question on our data sheet is, I know this is probably a little hard to see, but it's how old are you? Draw as many dots as you are old. Normally, you're not supposed to ask someone how old they are, but for the sake of this. So let's say I want to start maybe down in this corner. And I want to start drawing. Maybe I don't want to use that marker. That's okay. So you can choose any colors that you want. So let's say I'm going to make a couple this size. 
And this is the really cool thing about this too. So let's say I'm going to do a couple this way. And then I'm going to make a couple really big ones. So they're technically all still dots. But it doesn't say they all have to be the same size. It just says the same the amount. So this is a really good way to fill up your page too. Is thinking about um, making some of your items really big. And you can color them in or you can leave them open. So again, thinking about composition. So I, I usually like to start in corners, but that's just my personal. I just like starting in corners. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have, a, so I'm using dots, but they're all different sizes, which I think is really kind of an interesting way to go about it. All right, so I have 23 dots because that's how old I am. And now I want to move on to my next question. So I would pick a different color and move on. So the next question is born in state or out of state. So in state is a solid line, out of state dashes. So again, this is all about you. So this is also a really good activity to do with um, some friends or new classmates. So getting to know other people. Um, and this is a really good way to do that. So I was born in state, so I'm doing one big solid line. All right, so now the cool thing about doing these is because they are abstract, it's not supposed to be anything specific, but I can turn this around. I could keep flipping it throughout making this project and see, decide where I want it to go. So maybe I want it to go, maybe I want a diagonal line. And I'm just going to fill that in. Which technically is still a solid straight line. It's just I'm moving my paper around to see where I want it, where it's going to look the best. And again, I'm not making anything small because you have to fill up this whole page. So you want everything to be kind of big. Go on to the next one, morning or night owl. I am by far a night owl. I do not like the morning. So the night owl is this kind of funky moon shape. And you can also overlap things, too. Like, if you wanted to have maybe a piece of this overlapping, or maybe you want it to be right up next to it. Like this. And the nice thing is I'm going to color this in, so if it's not perfect the first time I draw it, that's okay. You can also blend some of your colors, and so you can do that by, like, let's say I'm going to have some of this orange. And I'm just kind of filling it in, and a tip to always use the side of your marker, so I'm not drawing with the tip because I'm trying to draw in a large color in a large portion of this. So I'm using the side of my marker. So let's say I wanted to add maybe the other half of this circle could be pink. So I could take this color, start on this side again using the side of my marker. And I'm going to kind of overlap the two colors. So depending on how close your colors are, they might blend into each other. And they might not. You might be able to see some cross hatching. So going one way with the lines and then going the opposite direction. So I kind of always like to make these like kind of patterns with it. And then to blend it in a little more, 
I can take my orange marker again and kind of go over those parts where they are overlapping. So that's kind of a cool way to kind of blend some of your markers or use two colors in one shape. And again, I'm making my shapes really big because I don't, I want to be able to fill up my space. So then the next question, so you just keep doing this and you can go out of order, but I think it's easier to just kind of go in order. And even if you wanted to like add a mark by the ones that you've done already, so you know it's easier to keep track. So dog or cat person, I am a dog person. And so maybe I'll choose another color. Maybe I like purple and that's kind of this funky shape right here. And maybe I'll turn my paper again. And again, the shapes don't have to be perfect. This is your interpretation of the shapes that are on that sheet. You can do the best you can to copy them, but they don't have to be perfect. And so this is kind of a nice relaxing activity for you to think about things that you like best it's, and think about um, characteristics or specifics about yourself. And then when you're all done, you can give it to somebody and see if they can decode or figure out all the information about you. So it's also a really good way to get to know somebody else. It's also super relaxing because we're drawing and we're just kind of taking our time with this, adding some details. And I think this is just a super relaxing activity. And some of the questions are kind of fun too. Like some of them are like dog or cat person, but it's also like, so our next question, iPhone or Android. Now this is like a big thing everyone always argues about. Are you an art? Are you an Android person? Are you an iPhone person? I am an Android person. I am filming this from my Android right now. And so again, I might flip my thing over and I'm going to draw these funky kind of tower shapes. And so now these are kind of, these are just lines, but I might make them a little bit thicker. It's still a line, it's just a thicker line. So again, I'm trying to fill up the space as much as possible, So, and I'm moving it around, thinking about where I think um, my shapes and colors would look the best, so therefore I'm creating an interesting composition. So I'm thinking about how I'm arranging my um, forms and colors and I know I'm using a lot of colors but I'm also thinking about like I'm not putting all the blues next to each other and I'm not putting all the oranges next to each other I'm trying to use a variety and kind of spread them out but you could also do this where you could do a monochrome so you could use all blues and white and black or you could use all pinks or you could do the co uh, the complement colors. So if you wanted to do um, purple and yellow and just use those two colors, you could do that. And see how I'm sort of overlapping some of these things. And I think that makes, that's part of like the abstraction. I think um, everything, it's not a, supposed to be a specific image and everything kind of covers the whole page. Things are overlapping and in different directions. And I always think it looks really cool when it's like that. And again, I'm drawing everything at a larger size to make sure that I'm filling up the space. And if you do things larger, it's easier to overlap your objects or your um, forms, shapes, and designs. So when you get to this part, it's actually easier to keep going and doing like I'm doing. And I like to try and make every shape um, or every question a different color. Um, and so that's where like combining a couple colors might be a good idea. So maybe one shape is pink, one shape is purple, and then another shape is pink and purple. So that way it's only two colors, but you're actually getting three shapes out of it. So again, see how I moved it? I changed the design. And so then I can move on to my next one. So pen or pencil. So I like pens. Um, and so that's another kind of funky shape like this. And so I can again choose a color that I would like to use 
and go ahead and draw that. So maybe again, I'll change directions again. So again, this is where you can really just take your time with this. Shouldn't be any rush. And again, like I said, it's your interpretation of like what you're drawing. So like this is the shape that I'm drawing right now. And it only has up to this point on the data reference sheet. But if I wanted to continue this shape going all the way, I could because it's a it's a pattern. It's a repeating set of lines. So I could keep going with this shape and go all the way down if I wanted to. So it could be totally like that. So that is what you're going to do and you're going to answer every single one of these questions and you're going to fill up the whole space. You're going to keep turning your paper and you're going to um, overlap some shapes and then when you get to the end you can add some smaller details. So you could go in with some a thinner marker and add some smaller details if you wanted. You can also, so when you're totally finished, you'll be able to like flip it and figure out which way you like it better, if you like it better this way or this way, and then choose which side is your bottom. And this is where I also think it's a really good idea to add a mat, and so that way you can sign it. Put your name on the bottom and the type of project that we just did. And so again, to make a mat, if we have, I like to do this in square paper. So if you had a nine by 12 piece of paper, you would cut your paper that you're going to draw on to nine by nine. And then your mat would be 11 by 11 inches. So that way you'd have one inch on every side of your paper. So that gives room for um, your project to breathe, but you can also have your name signed down here. So when you're finished totally going through your data, answering all your questions, which again, I will post this in the comments of the video, then you are going to, you can add some small details if you like, add a mat, sign it, and you are totally done with your data self-portrait. So again, we're using data, some information about ourselves to create an abstract work of art. So these symbols represent us because these are all based on data and these are symbols and they are representing ourselves. And because we made it ourselves, it is a self-portrait. So that is our project for today. I'd love to see what you made. And if you even post them in the comments of this video, then someone else can try and decipher the information about you. So you could also give this to a new friend or a new classmate if you've gone back to school yet and see if they can figure out all this information about you. So you can get to know them, they can get to know you. It's a really cool project. I'd love to see what you did and I'd love to see what you made and maybe I will even decipher some specifics about you. So again, thank you for joining us. This was our data self-portraits. I will be posting the this versus that data in the comments of this video. Thank you for joining me today on Cap at Home. Again, my name is Miss Allie. And stay tuned at, one, at 2 p.m. for another awesome Cap at Home video and more videos on Thursday at 12, 1, and 2 p.m. As well as our artist shout outs to learn more about your favorite Cap artists, teaching artists on Saturdays. So thank you for joining us. Make sure to post your picture. I'd love to see what you made. And I will see you soon. Thanks, everyone.